We're going to go back to our top story now on the continuing tensions on the Korean Peninsula. We are joined now by Richard Bronowski, former Australian ambassador to South Korea. He's joining us live from Sydney. Mr. Bronowski, very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. So no combination of dialogue and sanctions has worked so far. And now we have a situation where the North has explicitly stated which territory it's going to hit and with what. I mean, just how unprecedented is that? Well, it's fairly unprecedented, but one thing to note is that Kim Jong-un is not saying he's going to launch missiles on Guam itself, but surrounding Guam, which is a very strange thing to say. Another point to make is that uh, I think the United States intelligence, uh, satellite intelligence, whatever, cannot pick up any signs of missile preparations in the north. So as far as that is concerned, it seems so far it's just a lot of talk. And I think, quite frankly, the press, the Western press particularly, has been blowing this up into something that probably is beyond uh, reality. And we have to go back to 1976 when the tree was cut down by North Koreans and the Americans had B-52 bombers going up the chain towards the 38th parallel and then pulling out. That was a crisis. I'm not sure you could compare this with exactly the same sort of crisis. So if we look at the reality, you know, we have a uh, North Korean leader who is talking about firing missiles around Guam. You have a leader in the White House using just as inflammatory language, you know, fire and fury. But do you think we're any closer to, say, war than mm. we were a year ago? Because it doesn't sure. sound like you think we are. I don't think we are, but there's always that possibility because there's always a, a chance of a miscalculation. But let's be very clear about this. Kim Jong-un is not a crazy man. He's not stupid. He's, uh, he's, he's led his country for a number of years now, uh, and he's done very well. The economy is doing quite well. Uh, he's predi it's predictable what he wants to do. There's a lot of bluster. There's a lot of hyperbole. On the part of the United States, we have a president who is unschooled and unskilled in foreign diplomacy. But he's surrounded by people who are skilled in these, in these sciences. And we have uh, his Secretary of Defense, Mattis, who's making the rounds of South Korea and Japan and making reassuring sounds. And of course, I, I do not think that the United States would, would, would have a preemptive strike against North Korea. North Korea would have to do something first, something pretty stupid. I do not think that will happen. You say that uh, Kim Jong-un is predictable. What do you think it is that he wants exactly out of all of this? Where is this going? Oh, it's quite clear what he wants, and he said it, and often this uh, placatum is left off the reports of what he says. He says, look, we're going ahead with a nuclear uh, force. We're going to have a nuclear arsenal and we'll keep it unless, and this is the important thing, unless we can do a deal with the United States where they stop threatening us, do not bring about, don't, do not want to bring about regime change and let us get on economically with being part of the world. Now, uh, it seems to me that the solution is, and it's been tried before and it should be tried again, direct talks without conditions between the United States and North Korea. That's uh, what the North Koreans want. That's what they're aiming to get. And since the North are proving time and time again and accelerating um, their tests over the last year to show that their nuclear capabilities, is it time then for the international community and the US to accept that they are a nuclear power? Yes, I think probably that will have to be done. Remember, there was a lot of uh, panic about, about Iraq having nuclear weapons, about Iran having nuclear weapons, and how, how uh, Israel would not stand for that. Now we have a country, and uh, Israel has been accepted, of course, as a nuclear power. I think North Korea is going to be one as well, unless they can do a deal with the United States with the conditions that I mentioned before. But he, they haven't got there yet. They have, a, they have a couple of ICBMs that they've tried with a very high altitude uh, uh, flight path which they could extend over to the western coast of the United States but it's not clear at all and none of the literature I've read and none of the people I've talked to can say that they have yet successfully miniaturized a thermonuclear weapon or put in place a shield that would allow such a weapon on the bus of a, a, an ICBM to go, go back through the atmosphere without melting down. 
that's probably still a few years away, but we shouldn't be complacent, of course. They've always done better than the West thought they were doing. Mr. But Bron this has to be carefully considered. Mr. Bronowski, it's been great to get uh, your thoughts and your insights on this. Richard Bronowski, former Australian ambassador to South Korea, joining us live from Sydney. Thank you very much. Thank you.